Welcome to Preventing Your COPD Symptoms, Session 1 of the Learning Series Living Well with COPD by Respi Plus. Living Well with COPD is a comprehensive self-management education program which successfully improves people's lives. Many experts in the field, as well as people with COPD, have contributed for over 20 years to enrich this program. In this series of presentations, we will help you learn more about how COPD affects your life. Equally, we will look at how you can have an influence over your COPD. By focusing on your lifestyle and making positive improvements, you can make a huge difference to your quality of life. Let me introduce myself, as I will be the voice accompanying you through this exciting series. My name is Becky Zuko, and as an exercise physiologist, I have had the opportunity to help many people with chronic disease improve their quality of life through exercise rehabilitation. The development of this learning course was made possible through a non-restricted educational grant from AstraZeneca Canada to Respi Plus, a non-profit organisation which directs the continuous development of the Living Well with COPD programme. Today, you will learn more about the self-cleaning mechanism of your airways. What is COPD? its main cause, and what are the associated symptoms. Things in the environment that might make your symptoms worse and how to avoid them or reduce your exposure to these factors. Our airways have an efficient self-cleaning mechanism. Every time you breathe, air is drawn into your lungs along with dust and pollutants. Many of these particles are trapped inside your nose and other small particles stick on tiny mucus layers in your airways. Mucus secretions move up your trachea by tiny hairs called cilia. Once in your throat, mucus is then swallowed or removed by coughing. This process prevents particles from reaching the lower airways and doing damage to your bronchi and alveoli. Chronic Obstructive Pulmonary Disease, or COPD, is an umbrella term for a group of lung diseases such as obstructive chronic bronchitis and emphysema. These major breathing diseases cause airways to become obstructed or blocked. They often occur together, but they can also occur separately. Let us learn more about what happens in your lungs in each case. How smoking and other pollutants can alter your airways self-cleaning mechanism. When your airways are constantly attacked by pollutants, such as those found in cigarette smoke, they become inflamed, red and swollen. Your bronchi become filled with thick, sticky mucus. You cough to clear your airways. Later, your bronchi may become obstructed or have limited airflow. Because of airway obstruction, your lungs do not fully empty and air is trapped. You have obstructive chronic bronchitis. What are the signs and symptoms of obstructive chronic bronchitis? Sputum every day, frequent coughing, wheezing, and shortness of breath when exercising or during daily activities. Your spirometry test confirms that you have an airflow obstruction. How smoking and other pollutants may damage your alveoli. Your bronchial tubes branch into smaller and smaller tubes, which end in millions of tiny air sacs called alveoli, where the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide take place. When your alveoli that are damaged are or destroyed, there is a loss of lung elasticity. It becomes difficult for the lungs to exchange oxygen and carbon dioxide and less oxygen gets into your body. Your lungs do not fully empty and air is trapped. You have emphysema. What are the signs and symptoms of emphysema? They are shortness of breath when exercising or during daily activities. Your spirometry test confirms that you have an airflow obstruction. Cigarette smoke is the primary pollutant and the leading cause of COPD. The self-cleaning mechanism of your airways is less efficient if you smoke or you are exposed to cigarette smoke. 
it is never too late to quit. Quitting can help slow down the progression of COPD. If you think that you need help to quit smoking, see your doctor or a health professional who can prescribe medications to help you quit smoking and support you on your path to stop. You might also want to join a smoking cessation programme in your region. Some people are more susceptible to develop COPD due to a genetic disorder called alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency. This hereditary condition is characterised by the defective production of a protein called alpha-1 antitrypsin, which normally protects the lungs against pollutants and inflammation. In the absence of alpha-1 antitrypsin, the lungs are more vulnerable to smoking and infections and therefore at a higher risk for the development of emphysema. The Canadian Thoracic Society recommends testing for alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency to anyone with COPD who has smoked less than one pack of cigarettes a day over 20 years, or equivalent. If you have not been tested yet, you can ask your family doctor or your respiratory physician to perform a simple blood test. When you have COPD, some factors can cause an aggravation of your symptoms. Here are the most common ones. Indoor pollutants, such as secondhand smoke, dust, household cleaning products and chemicals, and strong odours, for example, a self-clean oven. Outdoor pollutants, such as exhaust fumes, smog, and some garden fertilisers. Emotions, such as anger, anxiety and stress. Changes in temperature, such as extreme heat or cold, wind and humidity and respiratory infections such as cold, flu, bronchitis and pneumonia. How can you better manage the factors that worsen your COPD symptoms? There are some strategies for controlling or reducing your exposure to indoor and outdoor pollutants. Quit smoking and avoid secondhand smoke. Discuss with your physician and or resource person about the strategies that can help you and your close ones to quit smoking. Avoid strong odours and work in well-ventilated areas. Wear a mask if using spray chemicals. Try green-friendly products with low odour. And avoid smog. Stay indoors if the air quality is not good. There are some strategies for dealing with emotions. If you are stressed and anxious, explain your disease to your family and friends and talk to them about your feelings. Practice breathing and relaxation techniques. Listen to calm music. You will learn more strategies to relax on session three of this learning series, Managing Stress and Anxiety. There are some strategies for dealing with changes in temperature. Follow weather reports, especially if you need to go out. If it is very cold, wait until midday when it will be warmer. Dress warmly. Cover your nose and mouth with a scarf. If it is hot and humid, try to go out early in the morning prior to peak heat or stay in an air-conditioned environment. Drink plenty of water if there are no medical restrictions, and avoid strenuous activities. Wear light clothing, preferably in light colours, and a hat. There are some strategies for preventing respiratory infections. Avoid people who have a respiratory infection, such as a cold or flu. Avoid crowds, for example, have someone drive you instead of taking the bus. Wash your hands and wear a mask if you are in contact with sick people. Discuss with your physician or resource person about the use of an action plan to better prevent and manage your respiratory symptoms earlier. You and the people you are living with should get a flu shot every fall. Having respiratory problems means that you are more likely to have complications related to the flu. The flu shot prevents flu complications. 
Remember, the flu shot does not infect people with the flu virus. You can get the flu shot at community centres, in health centres and from your family doctor or respirologist. Can you think about the most important strategies learned today that you can integrate into your daily life? What about the strategies that you already have been using to deal with aggravating factors? You now have a better understanding of what COPD is, what factors affect your disease and how to avoid them. Remember that you have the tools and strategies to manage better your symptoms and live a fuller and more active life. Do not hesitate to discuss with your physician or resource person about any doubts or questions that you may have. To learn more about today's topics, consult the learning module Preventing Your Symptoms and Taking Your Medications. Available for free at www.livingwellwithcopd.com We would like to acknowledge all the professionals and patients who have contributed their time and thoughts in order to enrich the Living Well with COPD programme, especially Mrs Pauline Anderson. Their dedication and help have allowed us to continue enhancing the lives of people living with this disease and their loved ones. Thank you.